Hello, I'm Rill. And I'm Lita. We are from the World of Warcraft Vault at IGN, and we're here to bring you news coverage and more from our time in the Cataclysm Closed Beta. We hope you enjoy this webisode coverage of our beta experiences. In this webisode, we'll take a look at the new Alliance race, the Worgen. There are no opening cinematic dubs yet, but as soon as they add them, we'll post them via our YouTube channel. Okay, first we're going to um, start out talking about our first impressions of the Worgen area, as well as the Worgen animations and things like that. The Worgen right now only have a, a choice of being a male. They don't have their female, um, what are they called? <laughs> female models. Female models, there we go. Um, so, but the males have the Justin Timberlake dance, yay for them. Timberlake, Timberwolf, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess, sure, whatever. Okay, <laughs> so first impressions, I really like the area of Gilneas, I really like the progression of the quest lines, I like just the general, like, ambience. It's not too emo, but it is dark, and that's very fitting to the uh, the worgen and uh, everything that they're you know they're kind of representing. To me, I like to describe it as Victorian Gothic, but more Victorian than Gothic. Yeah, I would agree with that. There's definitely a lot of European influences and in a lot of the design of the city and the towns and the the buildings and the clothing and st things like that's really really cool. I really liked the accents too that they chose for the different things that they say the um, the worgen NPCs even though they look human are um, they speak uh, differently they have different sayings when you click on them yeah I believe it's a British accent too that they're using for um, representing the people of Gilneas okay let's move on to um, the first area uh, that the players will be able to experience as a worgen, and that is saving the city. Essentially, when you create your first character, you log into a city that is under attack by a few worgen. There's a worgen up on the rooftops and, and all that, and you're ordered to report to one of the lieutenants to get out of the city, but you find out that he's dead, and then you find yourself in a battle to try and escape a city that's very quickly becoming overrun by Worgen. Yeah, it's kind of creepy because your first quest, they say, go find this dude and go talk to him, and you walk around the corner and he's on the ground and says like he's got like big slashes across his back, and you're like, oh crap! Yeah, I'd have to say, in this section of the city, one of my favorite quests was going around and opening the doors and trying to help the citizens of Gilneas escape from the worgens that are chasing them. And sometimes you found them and helped them escape, and sometimes they were turned into worgen, although you don't know that yet. Yep, it was it was pretty cool. One of the other things that I really liked that immediately caught my eye when, um, when I first entered the city of Gilneas was their little animations, you know, like a lot of places will have little birds and stuff flying around that are like animations that you can't click on, not like a rabbit. But they have like paper floating through the streets, flying through the streets, you know, like as if it's an abandoned city. And they've got like the the windows, the upper windows of the buildings, they like blow open and the curtains flutter out and then they shut again. But I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I completely agree with that. The ambience in Gilneas is really great. So, let's talk a little bit further into this section of the quest line. Um, as you're fighting the worgen in the city, eventually you'll do a quest where during it you suddenly get a debuff saying that you have been bitten. And it just says, you know, oh, it's just a small wound. Maybe it'll go away. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, it's kind of cool, because when you get it, like, the worgen, like, throws you across the room, and then some chick appears and shoots the worgen and saves your life. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's when uh, you get the 
Mastiff Hound pet to come and help you sniff out the worgen in the town that you can attack. Those Mastiffs are really cool looking. Yeah, they are. And if you roll a hunter, you start out with a Mastiff as your pet. Right. Okay, so let's talk about um, transitioning into the next section of the quest line in the worgen starting zone. And that is, you've been bitten, and you are in the city, and you're trying to uh, distract the worgen to give more citizens a chance to escape. And in the process of doing this, all of a sudden, you transform into a worgen yourself, and you black out. And then the next thing that you are aware of is that you're in a uh, in the stocks in a town outside of Gilneas, and they've just given you, the alchemist has just given you a shot or something that helps you regain control of your mind. And you are a worgen now. And right now, you can't change into a human. Yeah, it's kind of cool. The, um, the alchemist that gives you the power to overcome the worgen in you and, and act on of your own free will, basically, um, you actually save him in the city before you turn into a worgen. So now that you're a worgen and uh, you are somewhat in control of your actions, people are still a little wary of you, not sure when the alchemist potion is going to wear off, it's now time to fight against the Forsaken. There have been small earthquakes and stuff that have broken the reefs out at sea and have allowed Forsaken ships to get close enough to shore to start an attack. And at this point in the storyline, you don't know why they're attacking, you just know that they are. And it's your job to go to the outlying villages and stuff like that and start helping people get to the main town of Duskhaven. Yeah, you're sent to go um, rescue specific people. You're given um, the, I like to refer to it as the Little Red Riding Hood quest, because one of the people you have to go evacuate is a grandma and you're a wolf helping out little old grandma that's very ironic <laughs> so once you've saved some of the people you start heading down towards the uh the forsaken ships that are just off the shoreline this was one of my favorite quests because you you kill the guys that are the forsaken guys that are in control of the catapults and then you get on the catapult and you launch yourself onto the Forsaken ship so you can go kill their captains. I thought that was pretty fun. And then uh, when you turn in that quest, that's when it, that's like when the cataclysm really hits. That's when the huge earthquake happens. And it's kind of cool because you go down into this cellar to turn in your quest and your screen starts shaking and dust starts coming from the ceiling and you're like, whoa, what the heck's going on? And then you walk outside and, like, that place where the ships were that you were just fighting in is gone. It is underwater, and there's all kinds of debris and wreckage floating around, and everyone's like, whoa. Yeah, you can look out into the water, and you can see all of the houses that were closer to the shoreline are all under the water, and all of the boats, all the forsaken ships had been, you know, overturned and sunk, and it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's really great immersion factor. Yeah, and then after that, you um, you go talk to the prince, I believe it is, the prince of Gilneas, and um, he has you go and rescue the survivors from under the water. You go and you pick them up and put them on your back and take them to shore and go and get another one and go and get another one. Was, I liked that. That was one of those quests where you're like... But there's still more people out there drowning that I can go get. I can go save them all. But, you know, you're only supposed to save four of them. Yeah, that's when you know you're really hooked into the game and you've got that immersion when you when you get that desire to go be more a part of the storyline and going and rescuing more survivors than technically the quest wants you to. So that's really cool. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good storyline development part on Blizzard's end, or if that's an addiction part on our end, but we'll work that out later. 